Hello, Billy the Artist here, and we are back with a how to draw video. We're going to do a portrait video again, and we've already done Jude Law as Dumbledore from the new Fantastic Beasts. Today, we're going to do Grindelwald, played by Johnny Depp. So that's the portrait that we're going to do, and this, again, this one that I did is 1 hour 20 minutes long in real time, fully narrated. So if you check in the link in the cards in the description, you will find this full how to draw video of Jude Law as Professor Albus Dumbledore. Looking forward to the film later this year, number two. So check that out. There is also a time lapse as well. So we've got all the how to draw videos and we've got the how to draw cartoon time lapses where this you can see very very quickly in a couple of minutes as opposed to the one hour 20 but it's fully narrated we're going to do the same thing with Grindelwald but we do have uh, the Incredibles on and in the how to draw I've done Mr and Mrs Incredible these are all up online now so check out the link and enjoy we did Violet we did Dash we also did Jack Jack we also did Mum and Baby, which was good. We also did Frozone, which is cool, and then Edna Mode. Now, this is the same as the portrait of Dumbledore. So if I just remove those colour ones. So our Edna is that kind of quick. Again, just using the techniques to develop portrait skills. I'm doing these really really quickly now this as I say was 1 hour 20 now these are in the portraits time lapse and there's others in there so we have from the royal wedding we have Mr and Mrs Duke of uh, Sussex uh, Harry Prince Harry and Meghan Markle from their royal wedding again I just did this for fun and the time lapse is online same thing sadly when Avicii died I just did this portrait to show you what you can do with pencils Again, this is very quick. This was an hour, hour 20 minutes. These are like that was a day's work. That was a couple of days work. But again, you can see what you do if you spend a lot more time. But we're going to do a quick one today. It will probably be somewhere along the same lines as this. So we are going to get the pencils if I put those down safely. Now, I've got this sheet of A4 and what we are going to do is draw in very quickly the shapes. Now again, I am using a technique where I will put on and divide the page into quarters. So that kind of helps. So I'm just gonna mark the page up. Sometimes I'll mark, I'll actually put the, the marks on before and I'll just draw the lines on. So you can actually see me here, just putting the lines on. So I'm just marking up my sheet of A4 paper to divide it in half. So just putting a little tiny mark on and I'm using my trusty 2B pencil, which is a general all round good pencil. Remember you can use all different kinds of grades. So I've got that on there, those lines. So I'm now going to divide the page into quarters. So when you've got your reference and you can do this with any photo and you can check it out yourself just by having a go and experimenting. So there you can see I've divided the page into quarters and you've got the reference photo to the uh, work from for this drawing and we're just going to get it in and crack on and I'm just going to put some kind of lines little marks reference marks so we can kind of know where we're going so the bottom of his chin is about halfway in this bottom section top of his hair is not too far from the top of the page so again, we've got the V where his hair comes to a point at the front and that's a little bit below the half. And again, we'll just put these construction lines in quite quickly. And we can see that his ear on this side and we can just put a, a box in. Remember, if you check out how to draw anything, part one, 
it shows you about using these shapes so I'm just putting that box in there quickly for that here and again this here is a little bit taller but you can see how the side of his head here is about on the halfway line as it comes up so if we just put another rectangle in for that shape we've then got a fairly decent guideline and we can now put an overlay on the top but I'll put a box in for this full head all the way down so if we there you've got the full rectangle going in and we'll have and you can see his eye line because he's kind of looking down it's what they do in arty film shots and it's the same on the Avicii's ear the top of his ears if you look straight at someone the top of their ears will be level with pretty much with the top of their eyes but this is how you look kind of cool uh, and get cool moody shots that are lit so you can see the top of his ear compared to the top of his eyes is different so if we put in a long oblong there and if I put that little rectangle in it's a bit like a, a kind of you're making a mask really like a kind of robot's face with all of these rectangular shapes and triangles and things so now we want his nose and his nose is just a simple triangle and then we've got his mouth so we'll just draw a line in but he's got a moustache so his moustache is going to be a triangle there and then you're going to have another triangle underneath with a bit of a U shape and then you've got his chin and what I heard actually studying other portraiture is on proportions of, of a head. This is from John Singer Sargent. It's all about getting shapes in. Uh, but the guy who was doing the tutorial uh, said that from the top of your head to your eyes should be about the same as your eyes to your chin. And then you've kind of got half and half from your eyes to your mouth and then or the bottom of your nose from your eyes to the bottom of your nose and then the bottom of your nose and, and your mouth is contained within to the bottom of your chin so you can see that kind of half and then half again shapes that help you build up the actual position of where everything is on the face so very quickly you can see we've got this very simple set of shapes starting to show us where everything is that we're going to build up on and put the detail on for Grindelwald's face and features. So again, looking, I'm just looking, and yeah, the side of the cheek there is pretty much on the halfway point. The same with that one. And again, just checking so what I need to do is if that is halfway that needs to go up a little bit and then we can just tweak and contour and so now we want a diagonal line coming down for his chin and then we've got the halfway point there on the edge of his mouth kind of halfway over and that's where the bottom of that chin is going to come and the same on this side you've got a little part and we can see that's going to come from the center line the, to the edge of his moustache and then over to the edge of his cheek it's going to be about halfway and so that's going to come underneath just put a bit of a V underneath for that nose bottom of his nose where his nostrils are we can start adding these other details and I'm going to check on 
where that is. So that is, yeah, that should come down. So from the top of the reference image, and then the point of, so from the top of his hair, from the top of the reference image to the bottom V where his hair is, from there to there, you can see, and use your pencil to mark this up, should come down and be about the bottom of his nose. So we know that that's about right. So we can draw that V now. And again, that V comes up to where the edge of his eye is. And the same on that side. And then you're going to have the hair coming down. Making that simple shape there. So now what we need is these they're a bit like flames, little triangles of his hair coming up. And we're just indicating these in quickly. Just broad, quick lines coming in. And you can see you've got the top of the head coming down there, you've got a little triangle there. And then you've got a, that triangle goes out. And you've got his hair. So from this ear here, it comes up and then it just kind of bubbles around where that hair is. And then you've got another couple of bits that stick out. So there you can see very faintly the outline of the lines going in. And now what we need to do is start indicating in the parts of his eye. So his eye, we've got this wonderful dark shadow here. So you've got these triangles and these rectangles and you want that crease goes up. And then we've got his furrowed brow. And if you put the other crease in, the crease on this side is just on the inside of that center line. And again, we've got that furrowed brow line going up and you've got that dark line coming from that eye. And inside that rectangle, we've got a quick oval. It's a bit like a diamond, really. So you've got the fold coming down. And then what we have is the darkness of that point. And we need the bottom of his eye is just above there. So we've got that circle, little semicircle coming round, and then it goes level. And then you've got his full pupil. And you want that line again, accentuate that down. That goes right over. And we can just check that in a minute. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bigger shape. So we're going to go out here just so as we can get his eye in properly. <clears throat> so if we inside this rectangle, we've got here, his jaw comes out and you've got a little kind of dimple there, which is goes to the side point of his ear. And then that goes off and his hair comes down. And then the ear is quite pointed. And you can see that the top of that ear should be about level, just a little bit higher than the top of this crease. So what we can do, there's his furrowed brow. And it's just all about putting reference marks in to get your positioning right. Because if your foundation's correct, then the rest of your drawing is going to work <clears throat> and fit in quite well. So we know that from that angle should go up to the top of his eye. You can see how from 
the upstroke from underneath his eyelash, the shadow line, goes up and it makes the same kind of angle on this ear. So you can pull that down and then you've got a D shape inside that ear. You can do the top of the ear and you've got a D shape <clears throat> for some of the creases inside of his ear coming down to his earlobe and you can indicate that line there and the ear folds and in fact I could do with a piece of paper under my hand because the more and more pencil goes down I'm going to start smudging and you'll see in, my ti in the time lapse that I do I actually have a, a bridge a clear bridge so you can see the work underneath that I rest my hand on so I don't smudge and I don't obscure with paper but for these, I'm just doing a quick one, so I don't use the bridge, because this is how most people work, and it's how I worked as I was learning and growing in skill and knowledge and understanding. And you put the piece of paper down, and it will smudge a little bit, but we're doing a quick drawing, so that isn't too much of a concern. So here now, I really do think that is going to have to change and we can move that down a bit so I want the bottom of his eye further down and so I'm going to do that U, that's better. And then we've got the shadow that comes down and you can see how it creates the shapes for you. And then you've got the shadow here and you've got a little rectangle there that comes down and from the edge of his eye, that's where, and that goes up above his eye, right into that corner of his hair and you can see that's where the grey shadow is. So we've got that and that comes down then to the edge of his mouth. And then we've got a little rectangle there for that shadow and then the bottom of his chin. And now we want this eye. We want his pupil in. So that goes up there. And his pupil is just a circle. Remember, you can you can use paint, but I'm going to indicate there, because that's that. And I'm doing it quite large. That's where the big highlights, so just don't, when you're darkening with the pencil, we don't cover that. And that's going to be very dark all across there. And then the shadow comes down the white of his eye over the top of his eye lid and then you've got that shape going there again and I'll just indicate some shadow in there quickly so you can see a little bit of form and then that gives us the scope to keep this working so and gives us a reference point to keep working to as we build up <clears throat> so again these lines we need to change that position so that goes up to there and then this crease line comes down and mirrors on that side now here on this side we've got the line coming round underneath like a big U, like a bowl and we want just a trace line going across and coming out and that causes the shadow for is that right eyebrow so now we're putting 
his right eye in and you can see how like you've got the edge of the nose here so coming down following this line if we put the edge of his nose and we do the right nostril and then the left nostril you can see goes up right in line with that shadow point and again that's just like a nice little U that goes underneath and then from the center of there you've got the edge of his nose and then you've got that darker shadow which is just another triangle so again I'll indicate that shadow quickly so as you've got a good reference point to work to again again I'm just using very very simple shapes I'm taking my time so you can just see how you will build up around a face using all of these different shapes and then we'll fill in the the actual drawing very very quickly and so here we need that furrow brow line going across and they're very very kind of faint and gentle and the same on that one but we've got that edge and again that's kind of way so we need to increase that out past that here the side of his hair and we can and that point of that hair has got to come past this here on this side so now we can bring down the side and I'm just working on the different shapes as we go so now I'm going to bring in so you've got that line goes up over there I'm going to bring in his right eye it's got the strange iris and pupil compared to the very dark left eye so here now if I bring that line over and we can see we've got that very dark outer ring and then you've got that's it now that's again this is how you just learn and mark things up I'm just going to sharpen my pencil a bit so I've got a bit of a finer point so right we'll come down off this crease and we've got here that dark shadow I'll use that shape and so you've got the bottom of his eye to the crease down here is halfway and half again so his pupil has got to fit in that half <clears throat> and we can see here so that shadow is going to go down that's the edge of the where his eyelashes and that kind of goes straight up so it probably wasn't that far off first time but it's better to erase something and just have a try again yeah that is wasn't far off so now you just want the circle and then we want the big circle for his pupil there we go that's starting to look something like and again we'll leave the gap for the highlight and we can detail all of that up 
in a bit when we've got the rest of this outline down. So what we will do now is put in this here and this here kind of matches this here so we can have the bottom part at the same level and we need that just kicks off to the top of his ear but the top of this one is a little bit higher than this side and so an ear is just like a C like a big capital C but it's just got this little dent in it because this is the thing with people and faces is they're all strange shapes but by using the guidelines and putting the points down you can kind of give yourself good reference points and it becomes a bit like a dot to dot then and that's how you can build up techniques by getting your hand and your eye coordination together so here we're putting the inner folds of his ear in and you've just got that little nodule there and then so that'll be little shadow in there so again his cheek now is going to come down and follow these lines that you've put in and we can accentuate those in a moment now he's got a bit of a shadow there but here we've got his lips now and what we're going to do is his lips are just off they're not perfectly horizontal you can see from that dark under part of his moustache that edge of his moustache has to go up and is in line with the edge of this pupil iris on his left eye and so if we now indicate the underneath part of his lip and on this side it comes to pretty much the dead center and just a little kind of wiggly line but remember it's not perfectly horizontal it's just off a little bit and this side goes up and is higher than this side of his lip so the peak of the lip his top lip on this side of the drawing is a little bit higher than the peak on this side and then that goes down and folds under and then that touches there and then we can see we've got the top of his bottom lip coming down there And then we've got that shadow, that kind of second line going up there to join. And that'll be the shadow side. And then we've got this kind of square jaw that comes inside, but we'll just work on his moustache. So if we finish off this moustache of this rather suave but obviously evil wizard we can just indicate that down and we know that that's his moustache now you can see Grindelwald slowly appearing now we've got the majority of his face in in lots of shapes but what we haven't done is the suave background part of his body so here we have the top of his shoulder now again just from underneath his ear straight underneath his ear you've got that line going off and then you can kind of come down and you can see from the edge of that nose coming out past and then down here you've just got a triangle and that's the color of his shirt 
and then coming right the way down in line with the edge of his moustache and this is how it helps having these reference points you're going to have this wiggly line going down which is the edge of his shirt and again the same with that and then you've got coming out from underneath that collar you've got his jacket and his jacket line goes down there and then we've obviously got some other shapes down here that we can just loosely indicate and then he's got his kind of tie cravat inside here but again just very simple shapes so coming down from his cheek line we can see right on the edge we've got coming down to about here we've got the other edge of his jacket and this one's going to go through so here underneath that line you've got this collar that you can draw a triangle even though it's chopped off and you can bring it down and it's got to come there's a, a very simple triangle so now we've got another triangle that's going to come over from here so if we just bring that right the way across that is fairly horizontal and you can see that that is level with the top where the crease of his eye is the shadow crease of his eye and you can draw a very simple triangle and then here we've got a shape that just fits in and that's the edge of his shirt and again underneath there and then we've got this shirt waistcoat possibly underneath yeah, I think it's his waistcoat uh, that comes off and then we can simply come out past that collar and you can think right the edge of that is going to come off and then we've got coming down this shoulder now his shoulder you can see now underneath there the line matches if you put that down there you can think oh it's out or if you, you put his shoulder so always think about the positioning and placing of the actual parts of the body as well even though you're only doing a head and shoulders portrait or even a head portrait if you get something wildly out it just looks weird and you kind of think hmm that's kind of strange and doesn't look quite right and that's what you've got to do you've got to put the images together and think is that right and now I'm gonna just quickly erase from inside his face but I'll leave it on I'll leave it on the outside this center line that I put in again you can put that in quite gently you know I've put it in quite dark so that you can actually see what's going on on here and you can see how his face is developing and working together just by using those shapes now he's also got to finish off here so we've got going up to there we've got this edge of this cravat and they're all just triangles so if you think here we've got the knot of his tie slash cravat I mean he's not you know he's a bit unorthodox is Grindelwald so there we've got a nice little boxy rectangle shape and then you've got that going off there and the line going underneath there and then we can have that going down there and then you've got this very dramatic shadow that's coming right the way across again it's just a triangle from the edge of his chin so that then is obscuring what goes off up 
into that shadow and that's going to go up there under that collar anyway but you can see how that shadow curves around the neck a little bit and then you've got coming down to where your center line was to the top of that you've got his Adam's apple which is creating a little bit of a shadow now there is pretty much the full outline down of Johnny Depp as Grindelwald and now we're going to start to detail it up and add some tones in to start giving you the shape of the face in three dimensions again I'm just going to indicate the stronger lines in his hair first before we start whacking in these tones and again follow the hair as if you were brushing it and so you can see how that goes up and we need that line coming out a bit more and the hair comes up there and then just keeps going out until we get to that part so now I am going to I'm just going to finish off just going to indicate this hair here down to the top of his ears just so as I don't lose it when I whack in this tone rather quickly again the top of this eye where his eyebrow is and we've got here coming down underneath you've got these shapes that you've already put in for the shadows oh and now on the nose so here we are we've got this middle part that crease in the middle of his nose and we want the shadow coming down right onto there and you've got that rectangle of shadow that's coming down and then you've got a little bit of a rectangle of shadow there and that's coming on it and now again you, you can just keep tweaking as you go and this is the joy there's no there's no direct some people can just start once they've got the shapes down they can start with their eyes you can start wherever you want and there's different ways and processes it's just what you become comfortable with actually drawing so now I'm gonna get in a proper outline of his chin that's coming down here and the edge of his chin is just inside where that shadow is and again the edge of the left side of his chin is level with where the mouth comes up and you've got that slight little line before it then kicks up and so here we've got coming down a nice acute line and you can see that from the edge of his mouth is where that then comes across and that gives you your shapes of all of Grindelwald's face and then now I can actually start shading in and giving some form and I'm doing it inside all the elements and I'm using the side of the pencil because that way you can fill in larger areas quicker down the side of the nose and I'm filling in the shapes and it doesn't matter if you kind of go over a little bit I'm pressing on darker obviously down this side because you've got a much darker contrast and then you can just build up your own sensitivity 
and then above that eye going over to that eyebrow you got to, I'm leaving that there because it's that little light patch there because it's the top of his eyebrow and he's got very kind of light eyebrows because of his white hair and so here you can see this tone coming across the front plane of his forehead is going to come to about there and it's lighter than that part but you've got a little bit of dark in the center and again this is just the way that light catches onto people and creates the shadows now here we've got this little triangle of shadow light underneath his right eyebrow straight away you can see form starting to build and we need to bring this right underneath into the corner of his eye and build this shadow down on his top of his left cheek and then it's darker underneath his bottom lip and you've got a darker tone going down to this left side of his jaw I'm just going to bring that line in a little bit more and that's going to be dark shadow anyway in a bit and then we can bring the darker shadow all the way around to the right hand of his jaw and then we can extend underneath that and this is how you just you just fill in you just keep looking at your reference and look for the tones and just build up your sensitivity and increase your dark slowly as you're actually going now here I'm going to put in some dark for the top lip not the darkest of darks but just indicate the kind of mid-tone and we'll add the darker parts afterwards and then you've got this really kind of darker crease lines coming down on his bottom lip and your lips have kind of got lines on so if you like hair draw your lip lines where you can see them and it's obviously going to be a bit lighter but I've not put on really dark and we can use I use a putty eraser putty rubber that you can knead I'll just show you quite quickly and there you can pull off a highlight uh, I use I've got a couple what that one that I've just used is very very soft and this one's a bit stiffer so you can pull it to a point a bit better and using that you can actually get some definition back in but here we can see on the front of his nose and you can see I'm I'm holding the pencil I'm not holding it like you write you'll see that I will for you know just the way you write with a, a pen or a pencil is different and you can see me just using my wrist to build up or you know and you can use the length of the pencil and it gives you a bit more freedom as you can you know as you're scratching along and there's a highlight down here that I'm leaving I've just put the tone down on the front of his nose there and here now coming down off his nose you've got his cheeks and you can see you've just got this U line and the, the, the crease of his cheek going down to the top of his mouth is a bit darker and on this side where the lights coming from the high highlight is up here on his forehead and you've got a bit on the nose down here 
creates this shadow and this cast underneath his cheek. So here, coming down, we've got, I'm just going to rub out that one at the edge, and you've got that highlight coming on the crease next to his mouth and his moustache. And his jaw, you've, it's kind of a bit square. So you can see there's a highlight there, the shadow will create. You've got this square edge here of a highlight. And that's just the crease and shape of his bone structure and his teeth inside that create that. And then coming all the way down from this cheek, you've got this shadow and it goes right the way down to this point here. And then you've got a second one coming off this corner of his mouth. So I'm just indicating those quite quickly. And then I'm really holding the pencil lightly and just gently flicking it backwards and forwards. And this allows me to get lighter tones, even though I'm only using the 2B. I can build up some of the darker tones in a bit. Now again we've got the shadow coming right down the centre of his cheek. And you've got the highlight here on his eye on the corner but then you've got this kind of little shadow indicated in this crease coming off the side here and then it's all grey down that side. And this is how you can very, very quickly and simply build the tones up. Now again, I'm using that kind of very lighter tone. And when you think about your tones, you can think about them in different ways. You can actually get swatches that you can put next to your image of greys. So you can actually put it next to your reference image if you want. And then you can, oh yeah, it's about that tone. So I know I need to get that kind of level of grey or dark. But when you're out sketching in the field from life or you know you're in a cafe and you've just got your sketchbook and you're having a go and it's, these are things that I used to do uh, as I was studying I used to draw the lecturers while they were giving lectures and things like that uh, while I was making notes so here I want that lighter tone so you can't have the swatches with you all the time to actually help you. So if you think in kind of batches of darks, you can have, oh, I'm going to have from very dark to medium, and then you're going to have medium tones, and within that you're going to have a few. And then lighter tones, you're going to have the same thing, you're going to have a number of lighter tones that will help you. Now this here has got to be much darker. So I'm just pressing on a bit harder to match this tone, whereas this here has got to match this tone. And it's just down to experience and having a go. And I used to sit down just with a pencil and a piece of paper and just make marks and experiment making tones. And I can remember one of the things that I did, this is going back to high school, we had to draw wood. And the grain in a piece of wood is quite interesting because you'll you'll use the side of your pencil and you'll just experiment and have fun making marks. And that's all I'm doing here is experimenting to make marks and build up the tone slowly. In a medium pace really for a quick drawing. You know, you, you can do a very, very quick drawing. In fact, I did see on it's either Facebook or Twitter. Again, all, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, you know. Please do like and subscribe and share this out to people to, who want to learn how to draw portraits, uh, as well as how to draw, you know, not just cartoon characters. This shows what you can do. Again, I remember I'm doing the hair. Follow the shape of the hair as if you're brushing it. 
And again, I'm just indicating the kind of mid-tones. And you can see on this side, it's got to be a bit darker than it is going to be on this side. But I saw uh, on Facebook and Twitter, where I post updates of my work, the, the oil paintings that I do. Uh, and again, if you check out my oil painting time-lapse, well, paintings and drawings, full time-lapse, you'll see the latest oil painting that I've done is Joey Dunlop on his 250cc Honda. And that was from the year 2000. And I've done all three victories that he did then. The SP1, the 125, which was his 26th victory. I just love motorbikes. That's why I do those paintings and drawings. Um, I just love motorcycle, especially road racing and the TT. It's just a love of mine uh, that I got into when I was about 19, 20 years old. I got into motorcycles and that was it. But back to what I saw. There's the tease on Facebook uh, or Twitter. It's just one of these interesting posts, probably more likely Facebook. And it was... What happens when somebody asks for a drawing that should take a week or a day, but they wanted it yesterday? And so this person did a drawing of some kind of alien and a few other things, com comic book kind of style, which was quite funny. And he spent an hour, and he, uh, an hour, yeah, I think he spent an hour on one, and he got a stopwatch next to it. <coughs> and you saw what he could produce in an hour. And then he did a drawing, exactly the same drawing. I think he did like an alien, he did Spider-Man uh, and maybe another character. And then he did it in 60 seconds, one minute. Still recognisable. And then he did it in 10 seconds. So this is the difference where I'm showing you what I'm doing on this as quickly as I possibly can, but I'm still going slow because I don't want it to be... You know, if you see, if you go and check out uh, in the portraits... Uh, playlist you'll see a very quick drawing that I did in real time it was about 23 24 minutes of a comedian named Bill Bailey and it's not even as detailed as this it's very very quick but you see getting the outline down just like this and it's how you can build up your skills and your drawing so now here you can see like this eye is a bit sticking out because I've not put any tones in and really what I need to do is put the tones in because that eye is pretty much in shadow. So there we've got most of his face shaded in. But that's only kind of halfway. We haven't gone for a lot of detail. And what I'm going to do now is you can use your finger, but I'm just going to keep it clean. Uh, I'm going to use a bit of kitchen roll. And I'm going to push the pencil around. And this is a drawing tool. And even though I've now just gone over that highlight, because of the tones that are around it, they darken down too. And you use... this in exactly the same way as you use and you can use a i've got you've got these smudging sticks as well blending sticks and you can use them but they they are for much finer detail and in the time lapses that i do so now i'm going to go over his moustache and i'm just bringing some tone down in and you can see how it's softened it all up now you can use a brush you can use those smudging tools you can as I've said use your finger and it just softens down all the tones now again on his neck I'm now going to use what's on the kitchen roll and just bring that down because it's the right kind of tone and bring that down and we need to smudge the nose and that you can't leave all of if you just want and you'll see that in the Bill Bailey portrait 
it's just scratchy pencil lines. But I like doing that because it just softens it up. But you can see there how, even though you're going to have a darker tone down this side, the front of his head and coming round has still got slightly darker tones. And I think that's fascinating how the light reflects and creates and casts shadows <coughs> on people. So there, like I say, we want that eye to really stand out. And when we put the darker shadows on soon, that will really, these eyes will really then start to stand out. And now we need to put in some tones and I'm going to use a 4B pencil because 4B is softer and 8B is the softest and darkest that I use. And I'm going to quickly tone in, so that's got the shadow on there, and we can use the kitchen roll on that in a moment. Again, very lightly, just indicating the shadow and the kitchen roll can smudge that collar and then we've got lighter coming down there and across the bottom and then that's a little bit more dark and the highlights on it we'll just pull out with the putty rubber in a little bit and then we've obviously got darker for this waistcoat and the same on this side and then that'll be a bit darker under there and then we've got very quickly Again, I'm going to just fill these shapes in. I was always taught if you kind of squint you see the shapes when you're filling in an area very quickly and that helps. So I'm just going to intensify that line as I go over it. And I'm not doing the absolute darks just yet because there's none in the face. But this will give us better tones to work to. You can see how you can get a darker line down. Again, this is the 4B. And the, the darkest that you can get is in these pencils that I use. And these are Faber-Castell series 9000 is an 8B. Other makes, and you can just use any maker pencil. I just, I'm comfortable with these. I've used these for a long time now and I enjoy them. So that's a slightly darker shadow. Oops, I can rub that out in a minute. So now we're just filling in these details quickly and I really want to ramp this up now to see how we can make this a full and final picture. Now we've got this really dark shadow. Again I'm only going to half fill this in. So let's get, again this is a bit of a wobbly line down there around this kind of tie okay, I'm just indicating that up just gonna get the darker mid-tone down and we can really darken everything down in the latter stages Goes up, comes across. 
across and then we want this coming down over the edge of his shirt and that peaks down the shadow just peaks down there inside the shirt collar and that comes across so there we have his tie in in a kind of mid-tone you can see that goes right across there and then this comes up to his neck so there we have all of the very simple basic tones and again if I just smudge that quickly that gives a bit more depth and tone to the work and now we can start detailing up some of the darker shadows. Now I'm going to start with his eyes, with our Grindelwald's eyes. So here you can see you've got, in fact I'm going to pull out the highlight on both eyes before I darken this down. In fact, that's the 2B. I'm going to use the 4B first. We've got these shapes, so we've got this eyebrow, and I'm using the 4B and I'm pressing on quite hard because you get a much deeper dark black. As you can see, that's really starting to show up and I'm now just going to work quite quickly so we've got his pupil and his iris is all pretty much black I'm gonna really darken that down but then I'm not going to go fully dark, just so there's a bit of his iris indicated on that left hand side. Now his eye comes down over that side and you've got that line that comes over and you've got this dark line coming right over and then you've got the shadow going up to his nose. right in the corner and these darker shadows will start to give you much greater definition of everything else and so straight away you can see that eye is really looking out of the page at you as we develop the very dark tones and then we can pull the mid tones in towards them as we get finished. So I'm pulling that shape up to that eye, increasing the shadow, and it's got a darker shadow there because the shadow's cast over. So you've just got a little bit on that white. Now here we've got a highlight going up where his eyebrow is and a slightly darker tone above coming right the way down to this crease in his nose and then you've got that crease coming across underneath his eye and then you've got the bags under his eye You've got where his eyelashes will be and then you've got this 
great line coming right round following the shape of his eye all the way up into that corner and that comes out and comes down underneath and so now I'm darkening that right down and underneath following the shape and form and you can see how his eye is all of a sudden just lifting off the page and if we do the same down on his nose and you increase that shadow out to the side and underneath and then really increase the density in his nostril and bring that down underneath and then the nostril on that side is darker too you then get and you've got a little bit of a reflected highlight underneath the nose around the nostril on both sides and the shadow goes up just purely up the left hand side of his nose And then you can darken that down where his nose kind of folds over the top so you can see how again you're just creating form by adding the darker shades on top of his nose at that time so let's just get uh, these pencil holders are brilliant because when you get shorter you can use the stubs so now we're gonna before we carry on filling that in and I just want the sharper point I'm gonna before I fill in this shadow down here we are going to whack in this eye so we've got the real dark of his pupil and then you've got his white iris with a very very sinister black outline which is quite large so if we bring that dark right the way down to where it touches the top of his eye we need the dark coming right over <coughs> excuse me over this side so he comes right past the edge of his eye so you've got that lovely fold there and then you want the bigger shadow here accentuating and then where these kind of tear duct is you've got a couple of darker points and again where his eyebrow then comes off you can just indicate with a couple of squiggles and you've got a nice dark in the furrowed brow going up on that side <clears throat> and you can increase the shadow a little bit underneath there in that corner and again you can now see how that white <clears throat> is showing up we need the shadow on that side very 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 slight in the white there but then coming down we've got the real dark And we can darken right onto the top of his pupil and increase that shadow right the way around to the highlight and it's pretty much halfway down and then we can just build that bit of his eyelid in the bottom part of his eyelid and now we want this shadow and the fold underneath this eye just increasing a little bit and again just have fun making marks and it's now just a case of building up the shadows 
and increasing as you go along. You can see now how the eyes have given you <coughs> that intensity to build up the tones and the structure and the form of, in this case, Grindelwald's head or anybody's. And so now I'm going to come down on this side where we've got his ear. And what we need to do is bring that down. And we've got the dark shadow all the way in there. You've got a dark shadow right at the back. And a bit of a mid shadow going on and you can see from there that's where the top of that point is and then you've got from the top of his eye to the top of the dark and this is how you use your reference point reference points even for your detailing in of your shadows and tones so there's the edge of his ear going out and that goes right the way up there and we can bring that dark down and then we've got his ear coming around and we need to increase you can see the line at the top so we need to increase that when we bring that down in a bit so now we can increase the detail line just down the edge so we've got a bit of delineation down his chin just not my smudger I'm gonna be using that in a second and again we'll use that as a drawing tool increase the dark on there and now we want the shadow that's cast by his hair and we can increase coming all the way down the side of his face again I'm using the side of the pencil quickly we've got this highlight on his cheek and we know that that comes down straight past the side of his moustache now you can see more form appearing now again, <coughs> excuse me, I seem to have got a bit of a fro frog in my throat uh, in this latter half. And I, I've been a little bit quicker with this one than I was with Dumbledore. <coughs> uh, not, sorry, a little bit quicker, a little bit slower. So we need to build that around. Just so as you can see the, the building process of... applying the marks to give you the places where all of your reference points are to build your drawing and you can build your drawing quickly or slowly but actually talking as you're doing this I hope is a real help and you get to see in real time a full portrait taking shape now again I'm just bringing that down and what we need now is some darker lines in his hair and it's these kind of parts that you really start to see the drawing come together now again remember and you can see I'm following the flow of his actual hair and that's something that you can do and if you see in the Prince Harry and Meghan Markle time lapse. If you follow that, you'll see if you spend a lot more time on it, what you can actually do where, with like Meghan's hair and the tiara that she's got in for when she got married. And you just spend that time, and it's exactly as I'm doing now, but just spending a lot longer. So here we've got a bit of delineation of 
hair parts going up the lines of his hair so now on this here we've got quite a dark shadow and then coming down to a softer shadow and then you've got quite a dark shadow in that corner point going out and then kind of mid-tone coming down and then again a bit of a mid-tone I've not erased that line in the middle there I'll just smudge that with my finger and that goes all the way up now I'm just going to increase the tone down this part of his cheek and the same down underneath his neck <laughs> now you can see Grindelwald really starting to stare out which is quite sinister now this is Grindelwald looking quite suave but he does look a bit dishevelled in some of the images that have been released uh, so I think I might do the dishevelled Grindelwald too but that will be later because I'm going to do Newt Scamander next and then we'll work through some others uh, as well I think I might do a how to draw Harry Potter portrait seeing as they're all connected and Dumbledore ends up teaching Harry so I think we can have a good bit of potatastic time in the wizarding world learning how to draw so we shall do that and we might even get to draw some of the magical fantastic creatures so now again I'm going to use in this dark shadow this kitchen towel to really push the tone around now there's a lot on there and this is what you can do is you just use a cleaner piece and it'll see it'll start picking up some pencil and there you go straight away you've got really good shadows pulling down and when you do you've still got these reflected lights as well that show up which is quite lovely and warm and there you go, I'm pulling that down around his chin but now for a bit more fine detail I'm going to use this smudging tool and again you can really push it in the dark areas to pick up some pencil actually onto and here I've got another line going in onto the actual smudger and you can use this as a drawing tool to build more of your tones and your actual shapes start to come together again you're just using it exactly the same as you would do a pencil so I'm increasing that line I'm, I'm now putting this furrowed brow in as you can see and I'm increasing the shadow coming down over his right eye and I'm just using the smudger exactly as I would a pencil but you obviously get a softer nicer smoother line so I'm increasing the shadow now on his nose coming down and again underneath this eye and you can darken this down all the way and just keep looking at your reference points for what you need and obviously now you can see I'm really darkening down the ear to match just to give that tonal quality because it's all in shadow on that side and now I'll do the same with the hair 
and we'll use the putty rubber to pull out some highlights in a moment. I'm now going to use this to increase the shadow down underneath this eye and then down this side it's got a little kind of line going up there but here you can see we've got a little slightly darker tone in the center and then up that side where his head forehead will go around the corner I can increase that shadow and this is you can decide how far you want to actually take your portrait now that's really starting to come together and look quite good so I'm now wiping the edge so I'm getting pencil off because I want softer tones on this side to match this side of his face and again I'll pull out the highlights top of that ear coming down so we need to build those up again that's quite dark in that top we can build that down we've got smudge that around in the inner part of his ear now the side of his nose and then coming over and then coming down that side of his nose and you've got the highlight here you can see I've just left the paper as much as I can and again I'll pick out some highlights in a moment I just want that cheek to have a bit more tone on it and again underneath this eye following the curve round you can increase the shadow a little bit now I'm picking up some dark because I want a darker tone underneath this eye down there now <clears throat> again I'm increasing the dark back on this side and then really darkening down underneath the brow of this eye just to allow him to look a little bit more sinister and then we've got kind of very strong eyebrow line so we've got another dog that comes down over that nose there and that's looking quite powerful I'm gonna tighten up around highlight on that pupil and that's looking quite lovely so now again this is these are details around his eye and I've taken a bit longer if you look at the Dumbledore one that's a lot looser that's a much looser sketch but the eyes are so iconic on this actually making that stand out taking the time is quite important and I'm just indicating yeah you know, I'm not doing a lot of major detail the shadows and the tones are what work for you when you're actually doing a portrait so that's something for you to consider when you're doing yours don't think you've got to labor and do masses and masses of detail 
it is just a case of working with shapes and tones to build up all of your form. Now again, we're coming up to about one hour, 20 minutes. So I reckon there's probably another 20 minutes in this, which is quite, it's been quite a long drawing, but for you to actually see something in real time, and I don't put these up in parts because I'd rather you had access and you could just skip through the actual film and see even here as I'm adding more tonal quality down his left hand cheek you can see how quickly I'm just scribbling in to actually create the shape the tonal shapes that you're actually seeing and how quick they go in you know so it's not a, a massively labored process it's something that you can do quite quickly and obviously we've got to do the moustache in the mouth and then the blacks now the moustache in the mouth will take a little bit of time and then we can just add on some other highlights but this is really enjoyable and i hope you're enjoying it as much as i am to actually get this down for you so there's some more of his furrowed brow just indicated back in again just a little indication of a bit more tone there and there down the side and you can see how much form and shape his head's actually got now and so now what we're going to do is we're going to get his moustache down so obviously he's got this darker shadow on top and of his moustache and it comes down from underneath this left nostril can push that up and increase that intensity and now what we want is to increase the darkness of his lips as we build up this area quite quickly now again I'm just indicating so remember this lip is high and you got that darker shadow right the way down under there And then you've got quite a dark and that goes up into his moustache on that side and then you've got this dark coming down on his top lip and top lip bottom lip on on this side and then you've got that dark coming down there and then you've got underneath You've got three kind of shadows there. And again, I've just quickly indicated those in. I'm increasing, so you've got like a section of shadow going across and you've got that highlight there. And then you've got darker coming around his moustache. Now all the way up, he's got some real dark shadows in his moustache. So I'm just indicating those quite quickly. And then the kind of same dark patches of tone but not as intense as this side kind of more of the mid-tone and we can bring that shadow down from direct underneath his nose that goes there right across his moustache and over onto his cheek so it's more of a mid-tone darker shadow on this side and again you can use the point of your pencil because it's whiskers and again you go in the direction of the growth of the whiskers of his moustache the same as you do with hair so now We're going to have a few highlights to pick up on the moustache but that's already subdued it quite a bit I have noticed I'm gonna just 
there you go, darken that down a little bit. And we need to really darken that down in that corner of that eye. And the same on that side, just darken it down because it is so subdued. I'm just increasing the shadows. And this is where you just have fun messing about, making marks, and you can decide when and where you want to stop. So now we've got the centre of his face in, and we can now indicate up here the line of the, the V of his hair a little bit more to match that. Now I'm going to clean off the edge of the smudging tool a little and utilise that for drawing some of the lines in his hair as they come down this side and over his right ear. And again you can just push them out a little bit and that's how you get the kind of wispy effect of hair. So I'm pushing those out. I'm not doing the background dark and black because I want your focus just to be on the face. But this is looking rather nice and powerful. So here coming underneath his moustache on this side and underneath his mouth we've got more of that crease line again on this side of his cheek we can push that up to the earlobe and just round the side of his cheek and we can just increase that inside next to his eye and that goes right the way up and again this is quite light so I'm just very gently smoothing that over because here is the, the brightest highlight that we don't want to lose. And again we'll pick all of those up in a moment. So now I'm darkening down and here we've got a highlight around his cheek but as we push the pencil down you can create the highlight itself. So even there we can push the pencil round and you can see you're creating a highlight by pushing the dark. And these are just little techniques that you can keep developing and pushing as you do more and more drawing and experiment. Now I've had comments, you know, how long has it taken to do? Now this drawing has taken an hour and a half so far. But I've been drawing now since I was six or seven really. So I've really been drawing for over 30 plus years, four decades. I mean, I'm 47, so from my youngest age, but if you kind of think, okay, from 16, when I went to art college, we're looking at three decades. And just taking a sketchbook with you and drawing outside when you're out and about, drawing things that you like you will improve. So here you can see I'm pushing that tone around on his chin and it's all just a case of experimentation like I'm doing here. I'm just looking at the reference thinking right okay I'll push that and you can see how the effect is starting to really pull him together. So now I'm putting the roundness back into that cheek and bringing that up. I'm just darkening down that just to make the tones work. So now what we've got to do is really push down the darks quickly. Now again I put in under his chin and down this side put in the line of his 
each in and delineated it so that we can see it so all the work we've done on top doesn't obliterate and you've got a little bit of a different tone there but now all the way down the side of that and again I'm doing this really quick because your focus is on his face so it doesn't matter that we're filling this area in very very quickly because you're just impressionistically indicating what's there so you can see the shadow is just really pushed across and given form to this side of his face and then you can darken a little bit of that down there now again on this side where it comes up and over this side of his shirt I'm just very quickly indicating the shapes and that's on this side more in shadow so I can really just press on and fill that area in quick and you've got a quite a deep shadow there now on this bit you've actually got a bit of patterning in the fabric because it's not totally dark so you can indicate that really quickly with those quick pencil marks and then again some quick hatching over the top and there you've got delineation of his tie and again we've got a dark shadow there and a dark shadow there and then the same this is where when you use your hand you're going to get dirty and so having a piece of paper that you can actually put down stops you from smudging your drawing so that's going to come all the way down there if you want that so now I'm not going to leave a piece of paper put that there quickly I'm just holding the paper with my fingertips and I don't want to go over the side of his cheek just so that it holds the line it doesn't matter if you go over the lines like you get the construction lines outside that can look quite arty so that's a, a good thing that you can actually utilize in your drawing arsenal but when it's so close to his face I was a little bit careful there Again, I'm just indicating that shadow down there pulling that highlight back up that line to delineate that again we've got one two three that'd be a bit darker and because this is a soft pencil unlike when earlier when I was using the flat side of the pencil it's so wide you can cover that quite quickly and that looks quite smart again I'm just going to be a little bit more careful here I'm not going to smooth this down this time so here we want dark shadow on that line delineating so it doesn't matter about a little bit of a sketchy line going over on these parts because it's not his face we've got a bit darker there just coming down into this tone and then just lighten up and then we've got a bit more of a shadow 
again you've got some kind of patterning but again just put some squiggles on looks quite good and there's the edge of his shirt now well, that's looking rather fantastic now again I'm now using the smudging tool to bring about the tones here because you've obviously got like the shadow that's coming across his neck coming onto this collar and darkening that down and then we can just push that down a little bit and we can increase the shadow on his neck it's underneath his neckline is a bit darker there and then we've got the same for what looks like possibly his waistcoat but then we've got these folds down here so this is the side of his shirt collar and I'm just again quickly impressionistically indicating the lines that are in the fold and that gives you the impression of his shirt very very quickly and nicely <laughs> so that is going quite well and now what we need is the putty rubber. So I'm going to start from the top. I'm just dabbing down his forehead. And you can see how that's starting to bring out shape and form. Again, I'm now adding highlights into his hair but I'm following quite impressionistically just the lines of his hair again as if I was brushing it I'm just pinching these this to a point and then indicating the direction of his hair I don't know how much product he uses or is it all wand power Probably one power, isn't it? Knowing these people don't use things like product and hair gel and mousse and putty and all those kind of things that us muggles have to use. It's just a case of zap and jobs are good. So there, and now I'm pressing on lightly because this is in the shadow area not pressing on as hard and you still get indications of hair and you can see how quickly that pulls up again top of his ear some highlights going down there and down the side of his head and again this is where it really now picks up because we've got these little highlights around his eye and you can see how straight away that's really lifted Let me put it by the side of this crease side of this side of his nose top one coming across his nose again if you just stipple very very gently you can pull little layers and there is his eye really raised up and we do the same on this side we need to pull up the highlight same just over the top of that eye and 
and I'm just dabbing, just being impressionistic, and you can see how straight away that pulls it up. And we want a stronger highlight on the top of his ear, down the back. Now, I'm erasing that dark line just so as we've got a softer line for Grindelwald's ear. Highlight there on the top, going up the side, and the side of his head now coming out we've got his white hair being picked up again I'm now going to clean off the smudger tool and just re-indicate some lines back in And there you've got his hair. So now what we need to do is really pull that up on the side of his ear. And the same, we've got that highlight going right the way up the edge of his earlobe. And we can just lighten all of these little bits. And this is the beauty of using putty rubber because you can pinch it and pull it together you can just stipple and take out very precise little areas there I'm just pulling up his chin a little bit now here we've got some quite strong highlights into his moustache and again even down on this side where you've got the darker shadows so his moustache is now just really starting to pull up and then just around that corner I can just pull off a little bit of the pencil and then we've got reflected highlight underneath that nostril and then right down the edge up into that eye and this is where this is a drawing tool just as much as a pencil you can utilize a putty rubber just as much as a drawing tool it's part of your arsenal of techniques and then finally Well, pretty much finally, he says, we can whack on the highlights down the edges of his collar. To make those stand out. Again, this one's really sharp going up. that bar I mean you can fiddle this is the thing you can now fiddle for a long long time and that's the thing with art it's up to you when you want to stop but that is Johnny Depp as Grindelwald and I hope you've enjoyed that it's been real good fun it's taken an hour and a half hour 40 minutes but that is a really detailed how to draw portrait and you can check out the others as I said earlier check out the portrait time lapses but that's quite a good quick sketch uh, to put that down realistically if I wasn't talking probably get that done in less than an hour 40 minutes 50 minutes but it's great to explain to you how you can draw this portrait. Anyway, thank you very much. Please do like and subscribe and look forward to the next how to draw video, which will be hopefully Newt Scamander.
Anyway, take care, have fun with your drawing. Ta-da.